Hi, I'm John Miglosh, and we're continuing in our series of Making Money with Data. It's our third video on RFM, and today we're going to actually get into some of the scoring aspects. Hopefully, we'll try to keep it very simple and easy to understand, and you can write me if you want me to expand on it, but basically, we're going to be very simple. Okay, the foundational idea is the 80-20 principle, that not all your customers are equal, okay? And we've already talked about how recency is probably the most powerful variable. And so what we usually do is we'll take the customers and here will be our customers. We'll make a column. And this is like forever and ever, amen, okay? And the first thing we know is that the most recent ones are the most powerful. So we'll take whatever, usually this is like zero, zero to three months, okay? And so we'll take that and we'll make that, we'll give them a five, okay? And then we'll take three to six months and we'll give them a four. And we'll give six to 12 months, we'll give them a three. And we'll take 12 to 24 months and we'll give them a four. And, oops, I went the wrong way. <laughs> you can tell this is live video. We'll give them a two, everybody's, Give it two, give it two. Okay, and this will be, anything beyond this will be a one. Okay, so that's uh, 24 plus. So this is, this is three to six. This is six to 12. This is 12 to 24. And this is 24 plus. And that's kind of the, you know, top of the waves, normal one. Now we have some that start, that have eight, start with eight or seven and go, you know, add 24 to 36, 36 to 48, 48 plus. We have some that go 60 plus, okay? Depends, if it's furniture, you know, like I said, one of my clients, <laughs> that business to business furniture, they'd go 10 years if you ordered enough from them way back in the beginning and made a lot of money and did very well. So I'm not gonna tell you exactly how to do it, but this is sort of the concept, okay? And so, in that company that we ran that only had recency, what we would do, um, as I mentioned in the, in the, in the uh, sample of the month club, is one month we would go down into this one and we would just go into that first tier. The second month we'd go into maybe the second one. And the third we'd probably go all the way down, that's like the Band-Aid or whatever. And you can see that you'd mail a significantly higher quantity. There might be reason to go even further, but usually that gets into different data factors. So in the outdoor uh, outfitter company, we found that if they bought a muzzle loader, which is a couple hundred bucks, I think, you can buy those through the mail. Um, they don't reload very fast, so they're not exactly an assault weapon. Anyway, so the uh, muzzle loader buyer, you know, is a couple hundred bucks, comes in the door and, you know, the wife says, what is that? You know, we were supposed to get new tires on the car or a new refrigerator, more likely. And the husband says, oh, I'm sorry, I'll never, I'll never do it again. Well, a couple of years go by and we found that the four-year-old buyers, you know, they're down in here someplace, if they bought a muzzle loader, they were still worth buying and maybe they'd come back to life. Also, with a, a, uh, uh, an instrument uh, manufacturer, or instrument distributor, musical instruments, um, we found that if they bought a high ticket item, there was a cooling off period where they had to recoup the money or whatever. And oftentimes they were better if they'd bought a high ticket purchase, they'd be better down in here someplace. So it's not, uh, it's not always linear. Okay, so now let's do frequency because frequency is kind of the, you know, the sort of the benchmark easiest to understand. So let's take these people, let's take your customers and remember, the idea of the scoring is the 80-20. So here's your customers. And normally, when you read about this in uh, the books on RFM, you'll hear people say, well, you want to keep it easy and simple for testing. And so they'll say, okay, we're going to go five, four, three, two, one, like that. We're going to have equal quintiles, as a good word. We're going to have equal quintiles of customers for the many, 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 many buyer and the one-time buyer. Well, I had read the books too, so I started working with, I worked with the John Worth at Woodworker Supply of New Mexico, the smartest direct marketing guy I know, 
Um, and John said, you know, what we're doing is we're looking at the behavior a little more. It's, it makes a lot of sense with monetary. We're going to talk about that shortly. Although sometimes even monetary it does make sense to do, to do qu equal quintiles. Now this is the numbers of customers in these, in these little groups, okay? So, but the problem you get into with frequency is that in most customer files, you've got almost 60%, certainly half, but let's just say 60% have only bought once, 1x, okay? So if you do equal quintiles, if you divide these up by frequency, what are you gonna do? How are you gonna score that? 1.6 orders? No, it doesn't make any sense. It should just be one, one, one. And so what we said was, okay, well, we're gonna leave the one timers, we're gonna keep them one. <laughs> we give them a one score. Okay, so we're gonna keep the ones one. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a lot better job of one time and one score. We're gonna do a lot better job up here. And so what we do is we get, we give these guys a two, we'll give these guys a three. We might have, the fives are like these little sliver and the fours are like that much. And what we generally do is we'll do the top 1%, the top 4%, the top 15%, the top 30%, and the bottom 50% or so, whatever the one time is, that's sort of variable. As you can see, I've kind of got these numbers down out of my own head, you know. And that's because this is kind of an 80-20. You see this equals 80% of the file, right? This equals 80%, this equals 20% of this, this equals 25% of that, and this 20% equals 20% of the whole thing. See that? Now what that lets you do is it lets you focus on these guys right here. And these guys, these really high frequency buyers, we had segments in the outfitter file that pulled more than 100% response. Where we would mail 5,000, it was about that. Mail a 5,000 segment of these really high frequency buyers and monetary also. But we'd mail, uh, 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 we'd mail a 5,000 piece, pieces to those guys. And oftentimes we'd get more than 5,000 orders, which I said would never happen when I was speaking on, on um, direct mail, I said, you always have to mail more than you, than you get back. You know, you're never going to get a hundred percent response. It's not true. I've gotten more than a hundred percent response, which proves the principle that in theory, theory and practice are the same, but in practice, they're different. Think about that. I should tweet that one. Anyway, so, so what we've got here is a concept that what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the scoring a little bit to the data. And so we no longer worry about quintiles of customers. And this lets us see, by the way, it got the outfitter started doing a very, very big catalog and also realizing that there was a business to business component. There were actually outfitter organizations. There were, there were guides and there were lodges and there were people like that that would buy regularly. Uh, it was a really a business to business component. We had the same thing in a baseball uh, catalog that we worked with for many, many years. Or we said, uh, I said to him one time, do you, ever, do you ever do business to business? They said, no, we're just consumer. I said, well, um, who buys that, those $4,500 batting machines? And they said, uh, well, colleges and leagues and even major league teams, they said. I said, do you ever think of that as business to business? They might have some other stuff they could buy and we could identify them by that. Which gets to another part of the story, which is product identification. How do we find these? But you can find them a bit by frequency. Now, if you do equal quintiles instead, if we go back to that, the model that everybody argues for in the, in the world of direct marketing books, and you do equal here, first of all, you can't make any sense out of the low ones, which is the most important part. But also, all three of these, remember we're doing 20%? That's 20%. You've got, I've got three scores I'm using and it actually works out to be significant amount of the, of the total orders, which brings us to monetary, okay? So John Worth said to me, he said, what we're doing is we're scoring 
we're scoring the behavior. And what that means is we take, instead of 20% equal 20% of the customers, we're going to take 20% of the money for monetary, because we're on monetary now. Okay, so 20% of the money, what does that get us? Well, he said, it's interesting, 20% of the money gets us about 50% of the customers. Get a one. That's 20% of the money, okay, 20% of the money. It takes 50% of your customers to get 20% of your sales. Isn't that interesting? Okay, it takes another about 30% to get another 20% of the money, okay? Interesting, it's just ranking top to bottom. No matter what time frame you use, top to bottom, okay? Then you get about another 15%, and then you get another 4%, and then you get another 1%. Shh, just, it just comes out, it's, it comes out to be 1%, it comes out almost the same as my 80-20 principle that I showed you before. But again, when you use that, it helps you to see what's going on. Now, there are times what I like to do is I like to, to score the profitability in this behavioral way. And then I like to do equal quintiles in the sales. Now, why would I do that? One of the, thing, one of the reasons is that sales are a continuous variable. Each customer will have a slightly different number, so it's not like frequency. So it gives us a way that we can break them into equal 20%. But the reason I like to do it is sometimes, you're, sometimes you want to break up this group. Okay, now. You've already scored them with a one, right? <laughs> they all have a one, <laughs> you know, but you're down to this big glop. How do you break them up? Well, if you have another variable, another monetary variable, secondary, and it's based on sales, you would have, you'd still have a one group, a two group, and a three group. See that? You'd have a one, two, and three by just sales, stacking them up. Okay, so both have validity. That's what I want to say. So I'm not attacking the people who say quintiles, I'm not attacking the people, you know, John Worth with this beautiful, elegant system. Sometimes that doesn't give you a very good break. You end up with a very small number, and so they all fit into this group or they all fit into that group. And you'd like to great, you make them into three or four groups. Okay, so sometimes the quintiles make sense. And that is part of the modeling process. That's part of why we build a lot of variables, because there's pluses and minuses no matter how you look at them. Each variable, each score is a way of looking at your customers. Hmm, maybe you didn't realize it was this interesting and this adventuresome. Well, this is part of making money with data. I'm John Miglosh. Have fun with your data.